Hey guys, RC Peck here. So good to have you here. Um, super sad story this week. A boy, young kid, killed himself. He was on Robin Hood and he misunderstood, from what I understand, he misunderstood some information on his uh, app and he thought he had lost uh, over $700,000, even though he only put $16,000 into the Robin Hood app. Um, but I want to talk about this, not necessarily him, but uh, I mean, it's a super sad story, but all investing is emotional investing. Like it's all based on feelings, everything. We are feeling machines. That's all we do. We're in one feeling or another feeling. They may be a, a minorness, like you may be not in depression, but you may be feeling sad, or you may be kind of melancholy. Like adults have all these words to define the feeling sad but there's only four feelings a human can be having. They can either feel mad, sad, glad, or afraid. Now you can feel some of them at the same time, right? You can feel overwhelmed, that's mad, sad, and afraid, right? So different ones can come in and you can feel them at peak levels and you can feel them very shallowly, but it's always happening at all times and there's no non-feeling feeling, like there's no fifth non-emotion. Um, we're always in one of them or some of them in some parts. And so I just bring this up because, you know, Robin Hood, <laughs> they're gamifying investing. And this boy, I believe, happened to be, and he's 20 years old, absolutely a young kid. The male human brain is not fully formed until 27. And we're giving kids tools that they have no idea how to use. They have no idea what, what goes on when things go sideways. And, and I have firsthand experience with this. I started investing at the age of 15. Uh, I'd have to fill out a, a fax form. <laughs> My mom would have to scan it in and, and or send it. And it was all done through faxes because I was under 18 and I needed a, a guardian to sign for me. And most of my money blew up and I had no idea what I was doing. And I, and for a long time, I've been very much against options, uh, whether it's a covered call strategy, a buy right strategy, which is the same thing, selling, buying, doing iron condors. Uh, it's very little is really understood how these uh, investment products can really, really move against people. And they have their place um, in the investment world, but to be uh, brand new, and going in and trading and buying and selling and doing covers just with options is a is a really bad place to be. So I want to spend this one uh, talking just a little bit about, about investing from the standpoint of uh, emotions or feelings. And again, like I say, we're it's it's it is an absolute feeling machine. Um, if you believe you don't have enough, let me get rid of this thing there. If you don't believe you have enough in life, and then you get more than enough from an income point of view and you have not updated your wiring inside. Hold on a second. Sweetie, could you close that so it stops making noise? You're going to find a way to lose money if you have not updated your internal wiring, right? If you were born into a world called not enough, and all of a sudden you get enough, your behaviors are going to find a way to get rid of the money. And I believe a lot of this is going on right now with people who are getting that extra $600 from unemployment, right? Probably a lot of them are, are, are in this world called not enough, or like that's a belief system or just enough, right? So if someone who has a not enough belief system all of a sudden gets an extra $2,400 a month, right? Is their system going to be able to keep it and save it and pay down debt? Or are they going to find a way to get rid of it? So historically or behaviorally, they'll figure out a way to get rid of it because if they were um, wired to have not enough and all of a sudden they get more than that, they're going to figure out a way. So let's talk about feelings a little bit. I, on the price chart here, or I should say, let's talk about emotions and price charts here. So let's look at both of these right here. This is, I'm going to combine the both. So this is the biotech or a biotech ETF. And this right here is a lifetime high. In fact, today I'm recording this on Friday. That's a new lifetime high for XBI. So it's never been as high as that right there. But what's interesting is this whole period right here, this is about, let's call it six weeks right here. This is about a six week period where the, the sector went sideways. 
And one thing I noticed very long time ago was that once you own something, your relationship with it completely changes. You cannot be agnostic. Of course, you're going to have a bias towards it. Now, the goal ultimately in training is to get trained to be unattached to it, but that can only happen from training. It can't happen from reading books, and it actually can't even happen from investing for 10 or 20 or 30 years. But here you have biotech, which is broken out to a new lifetime high. By the way, it's breaking out to new lifetime highs as the market is lower today. Actually, I just want to see what the S&P, oops, what the S&P is today. Yeah, S&P is down 0.92%. And XBI is up 0.94. So just the opposite of what the market is doing. But it feels really bad when you own something because, look, you want it to go higher, right? The same thing could be said for if I just plug in gold. Gold has gone sideways for one, two, two and a half, maybe. I mean, I'll put the sidewaysness here. So gold's gone sideways for two and a half months. And if you own gold, certainly if you own a lot of gold, that is very emotional to see something go sideways, especially if you first have opened a position in it, right? If you opened your position down here and now you're up to there, then you're going to have a much different relationship with it. But it's our relationship with what we own. And it's also our relationship with our feelings and our emotions that determine how well our money is going to grow. And it just really sparked, not sparked, but made me want to talk about this when I saw that article about that 20 year old. Plus he was in a town close to, he was in a, he was, his parents are in Naperville, Illinois and, Illinois, and I grew up in Barrington. So Naperville is probably about 45 minutes away. So any Chicago suburb, I feel like it's, it's close to home. Um, this is all a feelings game. This is all a behavioral game. It's all a mindset game. It's all an emotional game. It's a hundred percent. You've got to have the right tools. You absolutely have to be asking the right questions. And rarely do I hear people ask good questions, right? They usually ask questions where they hand their power to someone else, right? One of the worst questions I believe you could ask is, hey, what do you think I should do? Hey, should I buy silver or should I buy gold, right? That's the wrong question because as soon as you do that, you're handing over your power to someone else. And I know most of us have been taught to look for answers, but I think that's actually a mistake because it's actually the person who knows how to ask the best questions. And you don't necessarily need to have the answers right away but it's the person who's able to form that great question, right? Because maybe you shouldn't even be in silver or gold for that person specifically. But investing is absolutely a mind game, 100%. That's why you can have some people who grow their money well over a decade. And you can have some people who their money was in cash for the same decade, same economy, same market, same politics, same everything except two different mindsets, right? Because our behaviors sit on top of those feelings and emotions. And most of the time we're reacting to them unconsciously. So as what's interesting, gold's not at a new lifetime high. That's about a seven and a half plus year high. Um, the other area, let's just actually check out XLK for a second, technology. Technology is pretty close <laughs> to making a new lifetime high, but it is not right now. It's actually down a little bit for today. This is not a what did the market do today, but I'm saying that to you in reference to what biotech is doing today. I uh, actually didn't tell you what gold was. Gold today, Friday, is up 0.84%. Interesting enough, uh, the small cap mining shares of gold is up 2.3%. So that's a good sign for anyone who is bullish on gold. So the, the takeaway is that if, if you are not studying or figuring out how to get trained in your mindset and get trained to ask the right questions, no pick of the month newsletter is going to ever help. No hot stock, no great story. Um, that's all information and information is fairly worthless today. In fact, there's way too much information. And in fact, some of the best um, podcasts and even YouTube channels, they're, they're actually taking the information, they're curating it, and they're saying, look, I've filtered out everything. 
And this is what I believe you should be paying attention to. So it's the same thing when you start asking the right questions. What happens is you get the filters. You get the filters to um, tell you what to ignore and what to pay attention to. So biotech's breaking out to new lifetime highs. Gold is stabilizing and moving up. Um, but even to SPY, if you look at SPY, I mean, S SPY um, is, is correcting a little bit right here. You know, you can tell your kids to be quiet when you're on video. <laughs> you can tell them to not come in the room when you're on video, but they're nine and 12 year old brains. <laughs> I'm not sure what they're hearing when I say, I'm going to be recording a video. Please don't come in this room. I think all they hear is come in this room. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, and then the cues, here's the cues right here. Those are at new lifetime highs. Even when they made the correction here, they corrected down to its old lifetime high here in February of this year. And so the fact that it, it corrected right down to old lifetime where that was a ceiling before, now that looks like it's becoming a floor. This price is definitely important to the cues. So... Guys, this is a emotional feelings game, mindset game, behavioral game. Um, one thing I wanna share with you quickly before I hit the pause button is I am launching a do-it-yourself training course. It's something I've been wanting to do for many years. I'm going through, going back through and redoing all of my videos. Um, and the, I'm calling this 2K for 10K. Uh, this do-it-yourself training course and the idea is that you invest 2k into the course and then the i want to create if not actually have you get 10k back and that's going to be through showing you what to cut what to edit what to change what to add because look bottom line most people are unnecessarily slowing the growth of their accounts by about five percentage points a year and that might sound drastic or crazy or even hype, hype, hypey, hyperbole, um, but it's what I've seen time after time for over 20 plus years of looking at people's accounts. So if you're curious about that, I have a link at the top of comments. You can learn about the do-it-yourself training course that I'm super psyched about. Guys, um, this is RC Peck. This is Fearless Wealth. Thank you for being in my world. Please like this. Please subscribe to this. If you have questions, type them in. Uh, and if you are on my email list, I'm always telling you where you can email me questions that I can cover in these calls. If you're not on my email list, go ahead and go over to fearlesswealth.com and you can sign up for that. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. We are moving into Father's Day, um, the, the backup parent holiday. Uh, I'm actually running a service at my church for Father's Day. I'm super excited about that. So to all the dads. It's really a dad's day. It's it's not a father's day. Um, a, a father is kind of a one-time event, if, if you know what I mean. Um, a dad is someone who shows up every day or every hour, or every week, is continuing to show up, is continuing to show up. And it really needs to be called dad's day um, because that's what dads do. They show up and they continue to show up. And they show up in ways that you don't notice until you become a parent or you become a dad. Certainly, Becoming an adult helps you really understand all the things dads do that you really never notice because they're not the, the in front parent, right, um, necessarily. But certainly if you become a parent and certainly if you are, you know, you become a dad and you have kids, you're like, oh my gosh, wow, there are so many things he was doing that I never really realized. So happy dad's day to everyone. Thank you for being in my world. And I will, um, I'll talk to you guys next week. Okay.